It's time! The DDP episode 6, that's the Devlin Duel podcast episode 6. I'm Martin Devlin from the platform with me. Simon Duel, 98 test wickets for our country. He calls cricket all over the world. And speaking of that wonderful game, we'll talk about the South Africa win at Lords. Davy Dum Dum wants to be vice captain again of the Baggy Green. Trent Bolt wants to still play Test cricket. The Black Caps win in the West Indies a one-day series for the first time in thirty odd years. I want to talk about Rashid Khan, the Afghani player who is just setting the hundred tournament alight. And Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Anderson, the first fast bowler ever to make six hundred Test wickets. That anniversary was this week. We'll talk about Novak Djokovic being told no go you us open and also the all blacks argentina but first simon welcome to the program um i was just wondering you've obviously been spending a fair bit of time down brentford your new favorite club because your old favorite club took its pants off at old trafford i was wondering how long i, I sort of thought we might be second or third topic in but no I'm, I'm pleased you started with it well played congratulations we do not have a midfield and, uh, I, you know, the messages that went backwards and forwards between yourself and I, I was worried. After everything I said, I was actually <laughs> genuinely worried that this was going to come back and bite me on the... And it's bitten me on both cheeks yes. and they are still hurting. Now, what has the reaction just quickly been in England to it? I know it's only one result, but it's such a major game and there is so much build-up and there is so much post-match talk about it. It's a great result. I mean, it's a great result for United fans, for, um, you know, I think for the football, uh, you can kind of see, look, Arsenal have been very good. There's a lot of talk about Arsenal. Um, obviously, you know, someone's got to compete with City. And at the moment, you would think that, that Liverpool and United are probably not going to do that the way they both played or both started the season, Liverpool in particular. You know, they've been so competitive the last two years, but it just, that, that was, it was pretty awful. Yeah, you were. Ordinary, United weren't, weren't at their best. Um, and the midfield, our, our midfield was just atrocious. So they need someone at least to compete with um, with City, and, and maybe this year it's Arsenal's turn. Who knows? Um, Leeds United have been off to have got off to a great start as well, but uh, I can't see them competing at the back end. But the talk's been great. I mean, the one I guess the one disappointing thing, mate. I think your thoughts on it actually. The the Ronaldo snubbing of Cara uh, of Jamie Carragher. I I just. I wasn't sure about that, and I wasn't sure how to take that. He walked over from the sideline to the Sky sort of pundits and shook hands with, um, uh, was it not Skulls, with um, Gary Ryan Giggs. Yeah, Giggs. And with Gary Neville, and then just completely blanked um, Jamie Carragher. And I just thought, you know, like, I put myself in that situation and thought, if I'm playing for another team and there is an absolute, you know, a legend of the opposition, I'm, I'm not going to snub him. I'm not going to do that. And I know... You know, we're pundits. We, we, we get paid to have, a, have an opinion. And if Ronaldo doesn't like his opinion, that's OK. But there's no need to do what he did. Yeah, no, I look, I'm think. totally with you as well. Look, I just think it's, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, one maybe it's the one benefit about getting older like we are that, you know, you just yeah. you, you just care less about that kind of crap, don't you? Like, I mean, unless somebody's mm. really done you wrong, um, you know, I've made peace with a lot of people that I've criticised over the years, and and, yeah. and, and and every single one of them, bar none. Look, I get on really well with Justin Marshall. Marshall's on our programme every week. He's fantastic. He's the best rugby correspondent in New Zealand, and he didn't talk to me for about five years. And I remember when we finally hooked, you know, hooked up again. He said, Devs, he said, I said, what a dick. He said, I have been over those years. I said, dude, it doesn't matter. Let's get on with it from here. And you kind of think with Cristiano, with everything that you've done, you know, is Jamie Carragher really that important or unimportant to you? In front of all of those fans, well, that's it. here's your example to your own children for a start, you know, and then everyone else in the ground. Be gracious, mate. Come on. You've won everything. Yeah. You've done everything. And I think, yeah, I think we all probably get a little bit better at, at when we've stopped playing as well. And, yeah, and, probably. You know, there's a lot of players, a lot of players hate the media when they're playing or, or dislike the media when they're playing. They hate being criticised. And the one thing, and I think we've said this before on, on the on the podcast, Marty, that none of it is ever personal. Yeah, it's just an opinion, yeah. and it, it doesn't make you a bad person, a bad bloke, a bad woman. Uh, uh, you know, none of it ever does. It, it's just a personal. And Carrick is right. Your sport on your sporting ability. Yeah, Carrick is actually right. Look at what he's been saying about Cristiano. Yeah. Look, I love Cristiano, mate. I won't have a bad word said about the guy. I mean, he was a, an yeah. absolute genius for us. But the fact is, is that this team at the moment. 
you know, when you look at the pace and the power up front for Marcus Rashford and Alanga and Marshall coming on, it's a different side. Let us move on to the cricket because I want to first touch base yeah. at Lords. Uh, Brendan's, well, it's not his defeat as coach. I mean, let, let me rephrase that completely. But that South African performance, they dealt to them, mate, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And, and you know, there's a lot of talk about, um, oh, the English haven't played any red ball cricket for five weeks and blah, 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 blah. I read, I read some numbers on Rabada, Ngidi and Nokia. Nokia hadn't played for 18 months. Um, Rabada hadn't played for six months and Ngidi hadn't played for five months. So they were talking about the, the English side being underdone, but they were absolutely, you know, they were, they were bold neck and crop and they were um, well and truly pants down. Uh, but, you know, it's their first loss, their first loss of, of the home summer. Um, they were too good for New Zealand, uh, obviously got there over, over India. Um, they, they fought back really nicely in the first day of today's uh, test match, the second test match. So they, they're going to have those blips if they continue to try and play that way. Uh, but it's just how they respond, how they bounce back from it. Um, but, yeah, South Africa were outstanding. And that, I mean, that Dean Alga, he's a tough, he's just a tough bugger. I think we saw that in New Zealand. He is just a tough bugger. He demands everything out of that side. And for the most part, he gets it. OK, what is more chance of happening, do you think? Trent Bolt actually playing test cricket for New Zealand and at an elongated period, not just a one-off test, or David Warner getting that vice-captaincy back that he wants from the baggy green? What do you think more chance of? More chance of Trent Bolt playing uh, a, a test series in New Zealand at some stage, I think, when it sort of, you know, when the time's right and possibly against... Australia, you know, I, I think that's the chance of happening more, more so than, than David Warner getting any opportunity back in, in a leadership role in that Australian um, camp at the moment. Why, look, why is that? A couple of questions around this. One of them, that, the guy that I feel gutted for about, uh, you know, all through this has been Cameron Bancroft, who's just vanished. He's just disappeared. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. you know, and he was the guy that was ordered out there to do it. Look, is it, I mean, is it time, do you ever forget and forgive that action because it was cheating or is that so bad in the context of the game and the spirit of the game that you can't be allowed to have a leadership role again because of that well i think that i think some of it comes down to the fact that that david knows everything about what happened and you know there's a couple of things there that, that the one reason that it may happen i still don't think it will but the one reason that it may happen is that at some stage when he retires he will write a book and he will tell all and he will tell everybody that all of the bowlers were in on it. All of the bowlers knew about it. The coach knew about it. Everybody was was um, com implicit in, in this incident. So he will tell that story when the time comes. So that's the one reason that I wonder whether maybe Cricket Australia will keep him on their side, but it won't stop him from writing the book when, when he's finished. So it, it's a conundrum because they all know that he'll tell it eventually. They don't want him to tell it now um, but they don't like the fact they know he's going to tell it eventually, so they don't want to give him any power either. Mm -hmm. it's, a really, it's a really interesting one. Rashid Khan, I mentioned him a little earlier, I wanted to talk about. I just love this guy, mate. I, I mean, you're yeah. seeing him first up. How good is he? For a start, anyone that comes out of Afghanistan, that war-torn country, that just the country that has yeah. just lived in hell for however many decades it is, to be able to claw your way out of there and be that good and have that persistence and now get rewarded, it's a great story, isn't it? Yeah, it's a magnificent story. He is world-class. I mean... T20 cricket, there are not, I'm going to say he's, he's probably up there with Sunil Narayan at his best, wow. at, as the best T20 bowler in the world. And, and and it's not just in tournaments that are slightly under the IPL. I mean, he his economy rate in the IPL, I think if I'm going rightly, is about 5.6 or 5.7. Yeah, so good. when you think yeah. T20 cricket, if you're bowling your overs for 24 25 or under around about every time yes, on average that yeah. is just exceptional and, and that's how good this bloke is you talk about i did, did a piece with owen morgan uh, about a week ago about how to play him he said he's so difficult because he's quick through the air but he's incredibly accurate the wrong and turns more than the leg spinner but he just bowls that back of a length in, in cricket terms that you cannot kind of get to and cannot really get under because he skids it on. So, look, it's a great story. And and I tell you what, Rashid is one of the loveliest guys oh, great. as well. He's, he's an absolute champion human being. He's always got a smile on his face. He'll always come for an interview. And he's, he's a lovely, lovely human being to go with it. So And he does everything he possibly can 
to sort of um, to talk about Afghanistan as well and, and the troubles and, and what's what's happened there too. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a fantastic story. And they tell me he's got a younger brother. I mean, he, he, you know, we've been talking about Rashid Khan for years. He's only 23. Yeah, that's amazing, yeah. So He's 23. They tell me he's got a younger brother that's just as good. Do the, do the crowds love him over there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The crowds love him everywhere he goes, honestly. Uh, you know, he is absolutely adored in India. Um, they love him everywhere he goes because he gives us time, you know, yeah. and, and, and he's an entertainer. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Anderson. I think it's 6.58, he's got now. It might, might have changed overnight, of course. But, you know, this week we were celebrating him becoming the first fast bowler to reach 600, a 19-year career, and a great average of 26, I think it was at the time, 26.4 or something like that. In his comments, we spoke last time on the podcast about, you know, uh, whether or not there will be any other fast bowlers ever that, that have that kind of longevity. Simon, you know, I was, I was looking down the list. Yes, he's, the, he's, he's got the most for a fast bowler, but you've got Glenn McGraw straight after him. You've got Courtney straight after him. Of course, you've got Sir Richard. I mean, you've got other bowlers, which you'd probably consider better bowlers. So, you know, where do you stack and rack him in terms of the greatest ever fast men? Oh, look, I think I think he's got to be in the... He's in the top five, without doubt. He's in the top five of the greatest ever fast bowlers to play the game. Now, he gets extra points because of longevity. Now, this test match in, in uh, England that's going on at the moment, day one has just finished. Uh, England bowled um, South Africa out for 150-odd, and they're 100 for three. Um, this is Jimmy's 100th test match at home. Wow. One, wow. 100th test match in England, which is phenomenal in itself. He's played, I think it's his 174th in total. 661 he picked up three wickets today so he's got 661 Six, wickets now at an average of 26 and change so um just for longevity he makes it into the top five comfortably uh and then you, you sort of you put him in the in the category with with dale stain with with what uh, with wazi Makram uh and with mcgrath i think they'd sort of be in my sort of top four and then you know your, your fives sort of i mean they, they you just don't know. I mean, you can throw any number of Marshalls and Garners and Ambroses and those and sort of guys Richard. in there. You've Lily, got to throw Had- Richard in Lily there. Hadley. Yeah. Um, you know, all it, it's, there's so many guys you can put in. But I think Jimmy comfortably has to be in the top five uh, of all time. Just the amount of wickets, longevity, and, and how hard it is to do what he's done for so many years and to continue to want to do it as well. I think that's... You know, that, that's a big thing as well for me. Well, uh, Simon, you've had, you know, you've had your knee redone and so forth. How the hell has he done it health-wise? That's what amazed me because, I mean, you know, you're pounding pitches. I know the footwear's changed and all of that kind of stuff and you stretch a lot more and the nutrition's different and that. But your hips, your ankles, your knees, mate, I mean, that doesn't change, does it? No, it doesn't, no. And, and I mean, the amount of deliveries he's bowled is, is just phenomenal. But the one thing that has been very good, I guess, from, from England's point of view is that post-2015, um, he hasn't played any, any one-day international cricket at all. He has hardly played any domestic cricket, and he just basically gets himself ready for test matches. He doesn't play any T20, so he just gets himself ready for test matches. And England play on average about eight or nine, uh, maybe 10 test matches a year. So he's basically got 50 days a year where he's got to be up and ready to go. Now, he's missed a couple here and there, um, but it, it's just a matter of they make sure that he is ready and ready to go for test match cricket. But just to put this into context i guess marty and you say you talk about the bowling and the wear and tear in test match cricket alone he has bowled thirty-seven thousand two hundred and seventy-five deliveries now that's insane mate. all right final topic then <laughs> exactly and i don't know whether you agree with me or not look i mean i'm not going to rearrange united states immigration laws i'm not just cinder i'm not going to go over there and tell them how to control guns i'm not going to tell them that you know we've solved the covid problem but I just, from a tennis point of view, I want Novak to play that US Open, and it's a real bummer that he won't be there. And then, of course, then it brings into question, you know, the greatest of all time and who's got the most Grand Slams in that. And so, you know, he's getting older, and he's actually, like, he's missed two this year now. That's the Aussie, and he's... But from a tennis point of view, would you like to see him there? Uh, purely from a tennis point of view, yes, I would like to see him there. I, I don't know. Again, the politics is a funny one. I mean, I had to... You know, I mean, I had to get vaccinated. I had to do that to be able to fly, to be able to do my job. Now, he, he's made that choice, and, and that choice he's, is one that he has to live with. Um, what I didn't like about the whole Australian setup and what I agreed with there was the fact that he blatantly lied on, yeah. his, on his form. You know? no, I mean, his, no, he if, didn't if lie, remember. His people filled it out wrong because they've never filled those yeah, no, ones no, out before. Yeah, right. 
he he knew and he lied on his form and he, he knew exactly what was going on. He tried to get away with it. And that's, you know, that, that's on him. This one here is slightly different for me because the world has moved on. Let, let, let's be honest. The world has moved on. I mean, yes. Uh, I mean, I don't, ha you don't have to show your vaccination certificate hardly anywhere anymore. So the States is one of the few places where I think you still have to do it. Um, I don't, I, I don't remember having to show mine too much traveling uh, of late. And, well, were you into and, Vegas? Did you, uh, you, had, you had to prove your vaccine before you are in the I'm country? I think. Because that's what I'm the rule is. Apparently, so I must have. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I must have. I must have had to prove prove my vaccine, vaccination certificate or I just up, upload it, I guess. Um, and so that's the reason behind it. So, look, it's it's one of those things. Um, he knows the rules. And, and if he wants the Grand Slams, well, he'll go and get a false uh, false vaccination certificate done like he falsified the one in Australia. All right, finally then. So that result at <laughs> Old Trafford, does it still burn? Does it still hurt? Because it should, mate! It hurts, it burns both cheeks. Both cheeks are sore from the bite marks because I've been bitten well and truly like a like an African lion has grabbed a hold of both cheeks and just gnawed away for a couple of days. Devlin. What a magic day. The Platform.